Here is an example of how to hook up the BP synth. I have the BP synth breadboarded right here. I have a dongle hooked up to a USB hub. I have another USB cord from the hub, which will go back to my keyboard. I have an audio cord plugged in to the digital analog converter. This audio cord, I have it hooked up to my USB audio interface so I can record the BP synth. I have a MIDI cable connected to the BP synthesizer hooked up to this keyboard that can be either only MIDI out or USB with MIDI out. On the back of the keyboard, I have the MIDI cable hooked up directly to the BP synth. It is the only connection I have right now for the initial test. Once you've made all your connections with your keyboard, MIDI cable, synthesizer, and other cabling, you should be ready to hear it play. Initially, we're just going to only test MIDI cable coming out of this keyboard going directly into the BP synthesizer. If all goes well, we should hear notes. In the example setup I have here, this keyboard has a USB interface on the back of it. Here's the cable, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Now I'll have to activate the USB by pressing MIDI out, and it said USB on. Now I probably will not hear anything playing because all the information is going out the USB port and it's not able to come back because the app is not open yet. If the app were open, information would go out this USB cord to the PC. It would talk to the application, the graphical user interface. It would mix with other signals that the GUI is creating and it would all come back through the USB to the keyboard, which is our MIDI interface and then it would go out through the MIDI cable to our synthesizer. Since we don't have the application open yet, we do not have any notes that we can play. So let's move on and open up the GUI application and get it set up so we can tweak all of our settings. Before we open up the GUI, let's take a quick look and make sure that we actually have our MIDI interface working. So what I'm going to do is open up an Explorer folder I'm going to scroll down to this PC, then I'm going to click up here on Manage. In the Computer Management window, I'm going to click on Device Manager and Sound, Video, and Game Controllers. And here is my USB interface that I'm looking for, the Axiom 25. There's also a second one on here that's listed. It's my Tascam US-122 MIDI interface, which is also a audio interface. But I just wanted to point out that you can go look for your MIDI interface in the device manager. Let's go open our BP Synth code folder. Scroll down here and find the BP Synth GUI. When we first open this up, we probably won't hear anything when we press our keys. And the reason why is because we need to choose our MIDI interface. Up here at MIDI, click on Settings. And this will open up a window that will allow you to select your MIDI devices that you wish to communicate with your GUI app. In our situation, we're just using the Axiom 25 keyboard with built-in USB MIDI interface. For input device, we are going to select None. For the controller device, we are selecting the Axiom 25 keyboard. For output device, we are again selecting the Axiom 25. The output device is actually the MIDI out port or the MIDI cable. The controller device is the USB cable. We also want to make sure in device to out device is selected and if we close this window click on MIDI. MIDI through should be selected at input device to output device. As you can see here we can also select our MIDI devices from the drop down menu but the moment that you decide to click on something the drop down menu disappears on you. Let me reselect that, and now we should be able to hear our synthesizer. A couple other quick things about the GUI is when you hover over the control, hold the mouse down and drag up or down. 
if you go sideways it won't do much. You'll notice that a value shows up when I hover over and disappears when I quit moving around. It'll come back when I hover over it again. But I can also use the mouse wheel to slowly move the control up and down. Let's go ahead and go over the Purgator real quick. In order to turn it on, you have to press this red button so that it shows on. And you notice I can move around with the notes there. Now I'll turn the hold on. And you notice every time I let go that it just continues to play. Now if I try to hold down the notes while it's playing and keep adding more notes on, it will not work out very well, as you'll see here. It just kept latching more and more notes on while I still had one note down. If you run into a situation where you feel like the appurgator is malfunctioning or not working correctly, try turning off both of these buttons and then start over with the red button first. And see if that clears things up. Now we'll go over a few more of the things that are included with the Appurgiator. Over here is a green button called External Sync. We will go over this later on, but what that is used for is to sync it with like a drum machine or an external sequencer. Now if this happens to be on, the Appurgiator will not work. If you have a problem, check to see if your External Sync button is turned on or off. Below the external sync button is the octave plus button. Now it defaults with the octave plus on, which is essentially playing the note that you press and the note one octave higher, like this. Now with the octave plus off, we can hear just one note, but we do not hear it continually play. The reason why is because the sustain is all the way up. Let's turn it down, have our attack at zero and our decay at around, oh, let's say six, and see what happens. Now we can hear it continually tapping on and off. Let me go ahead and put the sustain all the way back up. What we heard earlier was this note, and then this note. So let me turn the octave plus back on. Now if I press two notes, we're hearing four notes being played. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And the reason why it goes back and forth is because we're in bounce mode. Now if I were to change the arpeggiator mode to up and hold down those two notes, we hear it go up and then it starts back at the beginning again. If I can change it to go down and it'll move from the top down. I'll go back to bounce again. So those are the modes that we have to play. Now we also have a tempo control right here in the middle. We can control the speed manually by hand, or we can actually choose the size of the notes. Right now we're on an eighth of a note. This is a quarter note. Half a note. Whole note. And get real crazy, let's go to a sixteenth and a thirty second. Now some other things you can do with the Appurgiator while it's playing is you can actually change some other controls to animate it a little bit more. Let's try and change a few controls while the hold is on.
As you can see, you can have quite a bit of fun with your Purgator. Next, we're going to go over all the basics in the GUI, starting with the waveforms up here, and work our way across all the sections a little bit at a time, so we can cover all the parameters that we're able to control with the GUI. And we'll start with the waveforms next.